mighty and majestic, they soar 100 metres in the air, with blades equal to the wingspan of a Boeing 747. Wind energy is a growing industry, predicted to supply 17% of the EU's electricity by 2020. But wind turbines have their critics. Their very size can be intimidating, while wind is a capricious resource. Nevertheless, Denmark has staked its energy future on wind power. Euronews travelled to Copenhagen to meet Christina Grundstrup Sorensen, a mechanical engineer and senior vice president of one of Denmark's leading energy providers. We asked her why she believes wind is the answer. When we uh, were in the oil crisis in the middle of the 70s, Denmark were also forced, as many other countries, to look at alternative energy sources. Uh, as we have a very windy climate, it was obvious also to look at, at this as a, as, a, as a source for power production. Um, we don't have any history for other power, te power producing technologies. So that's why uh, the politicians decided to focus already at that time on the wind power. There's a lot of criticism about wind turbines. Um, and one of them is that they're uh, unsightly um, and also they're environmentally um, undesirable. So obviously uh, you can't avoid seeing them. They, are, they, are, uh, they have to be in the landscape as they have to catch the wind. That's how they produce the energy. Uh, and also they do make uh, a sound. Uh, right now we can't hear it because it's quite windy. But uh, it, it is a fact that of course it does have an impact. Uh, as you move them to the sea, the impact at least in, 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 in the people and where in the living areas will of course be uh, less. But then you will have other issues uh, with birds and fish. Uh, but actually uh, our initial studies from the parks that have already been installed for 10 years show that the, that the effects that we were mostly worried about proved to be much less uh, than, than what we anticipated. You actually mentioned to me earlier on that, that birds are actually much cleverer than we, than we really think. <laughs> so tell me more about that. They, I think uh, the birds are probably installed with some kind of uh, radar systems, uh, but and 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 that's why they don't fly into things. Uh, so even if you put them on their flying routes when they're going down south for the winter, uh, we can actually see in our inspection programs that they are very much able to fly outside the parks. They will not try to uh, fly in between uh, the turbines, but will find a, a route just outside the park. Now, you're an expert on offshore installations and you expect that uh, more and more wind farms will actually go offshore. I think offshore is where the big areas uh, that are yet undeployed can be found. We have in the North Sea uh, a huge uh, power plant area that can be utilised with a lot of wind. So it's obvious to, uh, to build more offshore uh, wind farms exactly in these areas. And here you can actually make very big parks that can make a difference in our uh, energy consumption. So if you build a few turbines here and there, it will not make a big difference in our energy mix. But if you build uh, 630 megawatts as we do with the London Array project. That's like a real power plant and it's situated right outside London, close to the consumption, and then it starts to make a lot of sense. What needs to happen um, to make wind power as efficient as it could be uh, as, as efficient as it should be. Mm. I think wind uh, has, uh, has the disadvantage compared to the way we have have uh, historically produced electricity that is very volatile. So when it's windy like now, you'll have a, a, a reasonable production. You could have a Sunday night where it's, it's like a storm and you'll have a lot of power production and you'll have a, 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 a day in the middle of the summer with no wind and no power production. And that will have to be handled in the grid, of course, uh, that sometimes there's a lot of power and sometimes less. It's not an issue when you have smaller fractions like 5 or even 10 percent of the power production, but when you exceed see 20 percent as we do in Denmark and yet still increasing, you will have to look at ways of storing the electricity so you can make the more effective use of it. It seems we're going forward towards a fossil free future, certainly fossil free energy future. Um, what proportion do you think of the renewable energy will come from wind? 
I think you can uh, foresee many scenarios. Uh, I think what, what we can see now is that we have many opportunities, uh, good power plant areas, uh, particularly within offshore and ambitious also from the different countries to build more. So we will definitely see more of, uh, of the power also in, uh, on a European scale coming from wind. Uh, how much that will be all depends on what other technologies uh, you could actually uh, mix with the wind power to make up our whole energy mix and how you also uh, how you also take it into the energy systems. The levers we have right now is wind, it's biomass and it's nuclear. They are the CO2 free uh, uh, you could say power technologies that you can really deploy in a large scale in the energy system. Solar will definitely come with time, but it's difficult to implement at least on the northern uh, part of, of, the, of the globe uh, in these years. So these are the, the te technologies we will have to do we have to do with if we want to produce CO2 free electricity. <laughs> Oh, I think so. <laughs>